you have ever experienced spiritual dryness before? I have. That was a protocol of death. Yes. You might minister powerfully today and then tomorrow you are dry. It means you are not, you are short of the Holy Ghost. It's an emergency. You have to look for him. Because it is only him that is the spirit in the spirit realm that can quicken. The flesh profits not. You can cover up for a long time. But if the Holy Ghost is not there, it will soon be obvious that that thing that quickens you, that gives you a spark. Because the proof of the kingdom of God is life, rejuvenation. If there is no life, it means you have a pact with death. You don't need to go too far to know what is the cause of this dryness. I have watched many uh, heavy men, many an anointed men that came down because of choices. The protocol of death began to work. And once upon a time, a mighty preacher on this campus, I saw him with cigarette in Abuja. In a bank, access bank, central business district. He was flowing on secret. He had, he had a shaft. His haircut had a shaft. Haircut. That was an evangelist. That was a man of fire. But he ended up with secret. <laughs> you know what he told me? He said, ah, So me, I'm still striving to go to heaven. That means they have, their civilization have taken them beyond the hope that we have in in Christ beyond this age that's death when he begins to walk out that protocol he will use your vocal cord to preach antichrist philosophies it's death that is at work you must be sensitive to identify when death is beginning to speak because death has a voice death has a lifestyle death has circumstances it has seasons it has times it has a gestation period Satan might come and there's something pleasurable that he seems to be offering but what he's actually offering is death I remember a classmate of mine you know those days I studied chemistry so this guy was a chemist he was my classmate they were the ones that pioneered black arts on this campus. I mean, those were the days where blood flowed here. It's either you are a cultist or you are very sold out to God. There was no middle line those days. You, you can become a chicken that will be used for sacrifice if you don't have any destination. All the middle liners suffered heavily. You know, in Rama, the Bible says Rachel was weeping for her children and she could not be comforted because what? There were no more. That was a day where it was a crime to be a baby. It's always a crime for you to be a spiritual baby. When thrones fight, it is you that suffers. They use you to balance accounts, use you to settle disputes, and babies die. Since the headsmen started attacking, have you heard that a, a, any anointed man of God was, was swept? I was in Kano during the riot. And I can tell you firsthand, it's a very hard thing for somebody to die. Yes, I can tell you. I've been caught up in riots. Death knows where it goes. It's not, we are not all afraid. No, 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 we are not all afraid. There are places that the headsmen can't go. They are, they are sorcerers. They are, they, are, they are astrologers. They map. They are trackers. When they see incense burning, they change course. They don't like to fight battles that they are not likely to win. The only way we will save Nigeria is by priesthood. In those days, a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one shall become a strong nation. Hallelujah. I've seen death manifest in different seasons. And the Bible says that Jesus had to put on the regalia of flesh so that he might destroy him that has the power of death. 
tonight Jesus is saying come forth I don't know how much of death you have experienced first of all it started like an excitement in the party hall and you went and disversioned yourself and that was the first time second time third time fourth time at some point it will become spiritual sex will become spiritual it will become like a drug something that if you don't take you'll not be normal just like someone that is on dope needs to take dope so that he can reason well you need to take sex so that you can be normal at that time it's a drug it's a it's a radical inferno but jesus today says comfort and the bible says and he that was dead came forth i don't care where i don't care where you have been entangled what is holding you down maybe there's a curse in your family you served the devil half of your life then came to campus to continue his service and today you happen to be in this place jesus is saying lazarus lazarus comfort comfort i remember i was invited to preach somewhere in the southern part of africa and when i was cleared from the immigration from the central city to the place where the crusade was was about five hours drive and i got into the city i told the people back at home to provide prayer cover never knew the kind of darkness i was going to meet it was darkness beyond what i've ever seen in nigeria i preached in Calabar. that's where they say witchcraft has its its base i preached in benin in the stadium and the holy spirit hit the stadium he hit so hit the stadium i could not preach again i had to be whisked out security people had to whisk me out from this stadium. i saw grace come out of my body my clothes could heal in benin hallelujah so that those are the possible possibly those are the worst places we have benin calabar oh jalingo 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 those are the worst places environmentally the demonic pressure is intense if you don't have a calling don't go to jalingo you won't come back you come back with an affliction death will begin to work a protocol in your life but you see all of these cities i've mentioned is nothing compared to umzimba umzimba oh my god <laughs> oh, we were, were riding i was praying in tongues I was praying in tongues that was a place that i was given the greatest salutation as a preacher because as we were coming into the city pastors stood on the roadside this side that side and they were waving the man of god and i was i was asking my host are we under attack he said no 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 no. the pastors of the land have come to welcome the man of god oh i said my god you know i was saying the wrong things as they, they, they were waving me i was accepting their waving i was saying oh my there's glory in the gospel i was seeing the wrong things i didn't know i was entering the dragon they were they said welcome welcome have you heard of the scripture that says them that sit under that shadow of death that was where i was going a city where death casted a shadow they were with me when I came. As I came to the church, some small, small children, like my daughter, they carried flowers like this. They say, I didn't even hear what they were saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were hungry. So they were starved. Their utterance was not was not audible. Was not. I couldn't hear what they were saying. But I collected their flowers and gave the person that was following another person that had listen to my message he also came to the airport when i was showing up so i was giving him all the flowers then when i came to the pulpit they shouted wow. to open my scripture they brought a crippled boy from the back there that is that's it start with this one the reason for the salutation was 
Anywhere your God is there, call him. We are in debt. We are in debt. But you can start here. You can start. Now, I pretended as if I did not see that guy there. I just went back to my scripture. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, my interpreter will interpret. And I continue. Teach. 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 Then life began to come. Life. Life. Now, this guy was not only crippled. His legs were twisted threefold. And while life started coming and life alighted upon him, meanwhile, I, I, I didn't know what was happening to him. The legs began to come back to normal gradually, like this slow motion. And some people stood up. I was wondering why they were standing up in the condition. Well, only for me to turn back. The boy that was sitting one kind, he was standing now. No, see, he was not healed yet. He was just standing. But he could not walk. That somebody can open his mouth, but he can't talk. You know, at that point, you know, the next thing to say is, what? But you know what? In 2009, I did not have the liver to tell somebody to walk. That's how many years ago. No, I didn't have that liver. So, the walk was here, but he didn't come out until the pastor that invited me rose up from his seat when he saw that the guy was standing and he, he touched my he said, man of God that touch he touched me the walk that was here now came out that was how I said what? it was not me that it was an accidental walk and the young man started walking <laughs> as that young man started walking Five crippled people in the hall released their stick and they started walking. As those five people started walking, miracles began to break out. That was the first time in my ministry. Meanwhile, I was more powerful than that day, than yesterday. That day, anything I say came to pass. Anything, just anything came to pass. Was it HIV? The wisdom to heal HIV that day was that I should take the bottled water that they gave me and I put it in a glass cup I said take a shot if this one takes a shot it foster this one takes a shot it foster this one takes a shot it foster this one they were taking all of, see there is a hospital behind the crusade ground they went for tests negative 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 it was life came into that place we were going for baptism about so many people have given their life to Christ so we were going to for baptism they were singing a song singing a song me and the pastor were in the front and when we got to the river the gift of faith was activated and i entered there i said lord just like your angel came and visited that pool that was at bethesda steadily they became a miracle pool heal with this pool today that prayer i prayed by 12 noon that water healed till 4 p.m 4 p.m that day we had finished the meeting we were going they were taking me back to the headquarters to fly by 8 p.m my flight was 11 p.m so by 8 p.m we had reached the headquarters to go to the airport and then the driver now said pastor this is my father-in-law's house can we visit him i said why not we entered there i said good evening sir the man didn't answer good evening he didn't answer then i realized he was deaf Then I touched him. I say, Jesus, eh? Jesus can make you heal. I was say, I was say, this your ear will hear. When I did like this, this your ear, the ear open. Without prayer. And the man started hearing me. and face me I can hear I said we have not prayed yet see I can hear oh. then he started dancing then I saw his wife his wife was happy 
but she could not stand up. Then I discovered she was crippled. Then I, I prayed for her, held her, raised her up. The woman started walking. The man was jumping. The wife was jumping. Then the son now came from a door here. And the son said, oh, this false prophet is a kid. He said it in his heart. And I heard it in my ear. Then I went to him. I said, you call me false prophet. He denied. I blowed air on him. He was slain. I left him there. The driver, he cried till we reached the airport. And when I entered the plane, he sent me what's up. That was up face of a crying man. He sent me that. Then I sent him the one of a laughing man. <laughs> Life came into that family for 15 minutes. Everything that was dead, he came back. This sermon was downloaded from www.spiritnerds.org. We equip Christians with thousands of strategic spiritual materials daily. Join millions of Christians around the world who have come to Spirit Nerds to learn about God and His Word today.